Welcome. Today we are going to be looking at species. What makes up a species? How do we actually categorize what a specific species is and why some organisms are within a species and other organisms are figured to be or categorized as different species? How do we organize them? So first off, we're going to actually define what a species is. Second, we're going to look at what are called reproductive isolating mechanisms. And hopefully by the end of this, you'll be able to describe the different reproductive isolating mechanisms that exist. Lastly, we're going to look at comparing and contrasting two types of what is called speciation or giving rise to a new species. How can a new species be formed? So let's dive in. First off, what makes up a species? Well, species are able to reproduce with each other and have viable offspring. And what does that actually mean? It means that their offspring is able to also have offspring. So if the offspring of organisms of two different groups are always sterile, that means that they are not the same species because they don't have viable offspring. If, on the other hand, two different groups could have offspring that can then have offspring, then it gets a lot more interesting. But the next part of our definition is extremely important, and it is a group of organisms that are not reproductively isolated from each other. So it's not just about the ability to have offspring that can have offspring, but they can't be reproductively isolated from each other either. What does that mean is where we get to the different types of reproductive isolation. Now, reproductive isolation either happens prezygotically or postzygotically. In other words, it happens either before you form a zygote or it happens after a zygote is formed. So, the prezygotic isolation just means that a zygote is not going to be formed by these individuals or by these different populations. So these two populations or whatever it is, so these different groupings of organisms cannot or will not produce a zygote. Why? There's a few different reasons. The first of which we can say is mechanical isolation. And what that means is that the reproductive organs of these organisms are incompatible and thus they can never mate. And since they can never mate, they cannot form offspring. So it doesn't matter the fact that a, a honeybee and a hummingbird and a flower are all going to come in contact with each other often. The reality is that their reproductive organs are completely incompatible with each other. And you might look at them and say, well, duh, their reproductive organs don't, I mean, it's a bee and a bird and a flower. They're completely different types of organisms. Of course their reproductive organs would be incompatible. Yes, but we could also look at the Galapagos tortoise and the Ecuadorian tortoise that we would looked at earlier and recognize that these two tortoises, even though genetically they're extremely similar, based upon size, their reproductive organs are completely incompatible with each other and that means that the Galapagos tortoise is completely mechanically reproductively isolated from the Ecuadorian tortoise. Another type of reproductive isolating mechanism is called a temporal isolation. And I put up a sea turtle here because many of you might be aware that at some points in time of the year that beaches are closed because sea turtles are going there to lay their eggs. So you should all recognize that there are times in the year where clearly sea turtles breed. And that means they have a specific breeding season. Many of you recognize that many animals out there have a specific breeding season. But it's not just animals. This also works for plants. And so if we were to look at a meadow and we were to think about the when pollen is released, it's released at, from different types of plants at different times. And so because these organisms are not breeding at the same time, because they're not trying to mate at the same time, they won't mate with each other. And so they are temporally isolated because there is a time difference when they are trying to mate. 
The next type is called an ecological reproductive isolating mechanism. So re ecological reproductive isolation. Ecological reproductive isolation means that despite the fact that these organisms might occupy the exact same territory and their boundaries will overlap, and so these organisms might come in contact with each other, they won't breed because their preferred breeding locations, their preferred breeding grounds do not overlap. And since their preferred breeding grounds don't overlap, that means that they won't mate with each other because they want to mate in a different location. Even though their territory overlaps, the specific area where they want to breed and mate is different. Geographical isolation is a next step out where now we have a geographical boundary. And so I put up here a lion and a tiger because lions and tigers na naturally in the wild will not meet with each other and they cannot have offspring because they will never come in contact in such a way that a lion and a tiger would actually mate. So they are geographically isolated from each other. All right? But even if a lion and tiger were not geographically isolated from each other, they probably still wouldn't breed because they would have a behavioral isolation. An example of this is lions and leopards. They live in the same geographical area. They have a completely overlapping habitat and territory. But because they are in competition with each other, they are trying to eat the exact same food. They're going for the exact same resources. They aren't going to mate when they come in contact with each other. They are going to fight with each other when they come in contact with each other. So they are reproductively isolated from each other because of their behaviors. Behavioral isolation doesn't have to just be because two different organisms might fight over the same resources. It could also be if a bird has a mutation where all of a sudden it's unable to sing the, its song correctly. Or its courtship ritual when it dances is going to be slightly different. If something about its behavior makes it where a mate will not choose it because of that specific behavior, that means it has become behaviorally isolated. The next type is where it really comes down to the gametes. So this is the more broad and overarching thing where the gametes are completely incompatible. So even if the egg and the sperm did come together, they wouldn't fuse and they wouldn't form a zygote. This is extremely important, especially in marine ecosystems where many fish, anemones, coral, and different species just release egg and sperm into the water. If the egg and sperm were able to just meet with any egg and sperm and form an organism, then we'd have all sorts of crazy hybrids. But that's not what happens. The egg and sperm is incompatible with another egg or another sperm of a different organism or a different species. So that means that they can only be fertilized by their own species. That also happens in a field if the plants happen to release their pollen at the same time. It's not going to matter because gametically those organisms are isolated from each other. The pollen cannot, one plant of one species cannot pollinate the, another species because gametically they are 100% incompatible with each other. So that is prezygotic isolation. In postzygotic isolation, that's where the organisms can mate. They do produce offspring, but the offspring is sterile. The offspring is unable to have offspring of its own. The most classic example of this is with a donkey and a horse, because when you mix a donkey and a horse, you get a mule. And a mule is 100% sterile. It cannot have just a mule farm where you're breeding mules, because they're not able to do that. The mule is unable to have offspring of its own, because the horse and the donkey are two completely different species. And over time, changes can occur to the degree where new species are formed. 
And what that means is if enough little changes can occur where some sort of reproductive isolating mechanism uh, appears, that means you're going to have two completely different species. So if over time we have, have developed enough mutations in a grouping where it's now no longer able to breed or now no longer does breed with the original population, separating out those gene pools, that means that we have a separate population, which means we have a separate species that because they're reproductively isolated from each other. That is called speciation. And speciation can form in two different types. The first type is called sympatric speciation. So in sympatric speciation, if we look at our pond ecosystem right here, if a few fish from this population were to be born with a mutation, which causes them to be reproductively isolated from the main population, but they were still fit enough where they could survive, they could still get the resources that they needed, then we'll end up in this pond with two different groups of fish. We'll end up where we started with one group of fish, but because of mutations that arose, we now have two interbreeding, two groups of fish that only breed with each other. Despite the fact they started off as one population, now we have two reproductively isolated groups. That is sympatric speciation. The other type of speciation that could occur is called allopatric speciation. And allopatric speciation is where instead of the group being able to mix with each other, we're now going to separate them with a geographical boundary. So in allopatric speciation, we now have a geographical boundary which separates out the different groups. And now a mutation arises in one of these two groups. So we start off with the grouping on the left and the grouping on the right being 100% identical. They are not originally reproductively isolated from each other. But because of this geographical barrier, this can cause amongst our grouping on the right, a new grouping of fish can occur where they are now reproductively isolated, where even if this center barrier were to go away, these groups of fish cannot interbreed with each other because they would still be reproductively isolated despite the fact that there is no geographical barrier between them. So they could become two completely different species over time, either sympatrically or allopatrically. In summary, what we got here is, remember, organisms of the spe same species are not reproductively isolated from each other. There is no reproductive isolation between organisms of the same species. They are able to reproduce and have viable offspring, and there are no reproductive isolating mechanisms. There are, is nothing to stop them from mating with each other. And over time, mutations can occur which can cause reproductive isolation to take place. And if there is a cause of reproductive isolation, that means that a new species has arose, either allopatrically, separated by ge geography, or sympatrically, where there is no geographical separation. So we can have speciation occur because of small changes which cause reproductive isolation. That's it for this time. Be awesome, stay awesome.